back to this drum session. I've got a special song for you today. But first, a word from our sponsor. Do you have gas? Go witness. No, not that kind of gas. I'm talking about gear acquisition syndrome. You know you have it when you have more instruments than God and have run out of room for them all. Well, to help you and keep Highland Guitar Studio afloat during this pandemic, I'm proud to announce Highland Guitar Studio's Safe Haven. My secure climate controlled environment will give you peace of mind that your instruments are being well cared for. Featuring year round 45% relative humidity, a constant 68 degrees just like home, and UVA, B, C, and D protective window treatments. To keep them sounding great, I'll make sure that they're polished, tuned, and played daily. I'll even replace the strings as needed with your favorite brand, free of charge. Heck, I even have story time for the little ones. A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut. Vladimir, please respect other people's spaces. Keep your strings to yourself. So, if you're a Florida snowbird, on a working from anywhere tour, or entangled in a messy divorce, Highland Guitar Studio's safe haven is for you. And right now, I have a reduced rate for 1928 Housers, George Harrison Rosewood Tellies by Paul Waller, and 58 Les Paul Gold Tops. Bring them on down, I'll be glad you did. Clients waive any and all claims to royalties earned by sounds created by contracted instruments in the event that they are used in recordings entering the bill where charts are similar. And in all legal fees incurred by either party will be paid by said gasser. In the unlikely event of death of clients using the divorce a contingency plan, instruments will become property of Why Not Media LLC in perpetuity, not a real service. So the song we're going to do this time uh, is rather fitting. Um, it was 40 years ago this week that we lost John Lennon. Uh, but 55 years ago this month that this song was released, Norwegian Wood. Uh, John Lennon is credited with, with uh, bringing it into the, to the guys, and uh, Paul helped write the middle eight. Uh, it's a part of, I'll explain in a little bit, but it features uh, something that maybe you haven't encountered just yet. And that's what we call compound time. As you can see by the breakdown that I have here, uh, we have 4-4 four, four time. Now each beat is usually marked by a quarter note. Uh, and then each beat could be broken down into two parts, and we count those parts as one and two and, and so forth. Uh, but with six eight time, this is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, it's what we call a compound meter, uh, meaning that each beat is going to break down into three parts. And so if you look at the six eight, it's there's two beats per measure. One, two, with those two beats being broken down into eighth notes, three eighth notes, and those would be counted as one and a two and a. Now before you just, your head totally explodes. Hold on. So the six eight time, this is how you can usually determine what uh, a compound meter is and, and how many beats per measure. There's a little trick. So if the bottom number of your time signature is an eight and the top number is divisible by three, Oh, sorry, a little math. It's okay. Then you're in compound meter. All right? So, uh, three into six is two, right? And so, naturally, we have two beats. So those two beats are going to break down into three parts, and we would count those as one and uh, two and. Uh. And if you've done your homework with your different rhythms, uh, these would be triplets, um, and you would count them as such. Uh, you can count it as one, two, three, four, five, six, but sometimes uh, it's better to count it as one and uh, two and. Uh. Let's break it down a little more. So as you see here, we have the basic strum pattern. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and use all downstrokes. Um, and that's fine. In fact, in some of the, the measures that we're gonna do with when we play it, uh, you'll play a straight up, you know, straight eighths, uh, rather, it's in a triplet fashion, so it'll be all downstrokes. One, two, three, four, five, six. But other times, uh, you might want to break down that second and fourth, uh, rather fifth count, and do a down up strum. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Uh, give that some practice. Just you know, play through you know the different chords. Um, you might even start with one chord just to get your hand going in the right direction. So here we have the verse. You'll be happy to know that this only has two parts. A lot like uh, many songs, um, that's all you need. 
you know, doesn't get too complicated other than the rhythm, all right? That's basically the teachable moment in this whole song. Uh, so what I have here, uh, you can see the rhythm. We have two measures of D, and then we, the next measure, even though there's no D written there, it's just understood that you pl keep playing the D until you're given a new chord. Uh, so the, the first beat of that third measure is going to have, is going to be the D, and then it's going to be the C add 9, G over B, and then the D, right? And we finish it off with another D. And you'll play this two times before you move to the next section. So this would be a little bit like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 You should know also that it's, the, it's used as the intro and the instrumental part that comes in the middle of the song. Um, you'll hear on the video that I play uh, that melody part that's on the top. Uh, I have this great 12 string that you're going to hear. And I worked out a way to, to play, uh, I think it's George's part, over the top. And I just, you know, was able to sneak it in there. But you'll see my chord, or uh, your chords, rather, in the inset. And, you know, you're going to be playing something like this. Moving on to the middle eight. All right, now the middle eight can sometimes be called a bridge. Um, in this song, I don't think it's really a bridge because it, if it's a bridge, then generally it's bridging two parts, right? Um, and you see it once. Um, but this middle eight comes back a couple of times. So, you know, do you call it an interlude? Okay. Uh, it's hard to call it a chorus because, you know, the, the word Norwegian wood is, is present in the verses. So, um, really, it's just a song. It's got two different sections. No big deal. Uh, and like some of my other favorite Beatles songs, uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, uh, it has, it goes from D major to D minor. Uh, and I think that it's, it's a really great way to establish some contrast. Um, so going through, uh, it, it doesn't have a repeat, it's just the, the four bars, uh, rather eight bars, and it goes a little bit like this. One, two, and three, four, five, and six. Work that out. There's a, a little trick, and I, maybe I should have mentioned this before with the uh, the other section. Because this is a YouTube video, there's a little tool that you can use. If you look down below and you see the little gearbox, you can slow back the speed um, to three quarter. So as you're learning to, to get the chords and get the changes, that's going to be able to slow me down. You'll be amazed at how well it holds the pitch. It doesn't slow it down like a, a, a record which is this, what this was originally released on. Um, it keeps the pitch, but just slows it down. It's really amazing. I don't know who the developer is, but they, they need an award for something like that. But give it a try, you know, until you get the chords, you know, to all come together. One, two...
Norwegian Wood. We'll see you next time.